Hi friends and happy Sunday. Won't you join me for some time of worship? Hi, everybody. With the closing of the Olympics this week, I just wanted to say what a great job Team USA has been doing. And after spending the two weeks of watching the sports, a Bible verse had come to mind. Hebrews 12.01 Let us keep running the race. Nothing more than running the race is important. And sometimes you might not get the gold, but at least you get a medal. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's, let's, let's go, let's go, let's go, yeah. <laughs> Are you ready to praise? Cause I'm ready to praise. Yo, here we go. One, two, three, let's get it.
celebrate to sing. I can do all things through Jesus Christ in me. So today marked the closing ceremonies of the Olympics, the end of the great to-do. And when I think about the Olympics, I think about sport, hard work, and in other years, the fans. And when I was thinking about all that stuff, um, and my husband, Scott, who you saw earlier, he was thinking about it too. Hebrews chapter 12 kind of jumped out at us. So Hebrews 12, starting verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for joy was set that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So last week, we talked about how God helps us train, helps us get better, and be able to step forward. It was also in Hebrews chapter 12. But we train for this race, this great race. And I, growing up, heard this verse a lot. Keep on running the race. And when we think about running, it is one of those sports that is actually really on your own. When I think about someone running, I think about a singular individual just going for themselves. But when we look at the passage, that's not really what's talking about. It says, because we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. What is that about? Well, when you read the book of Hebrews, particularly of chapter 11, right before chapter 12, which is important when we want to understand a Bible verse, we see uh, the author of Hebrews just go on about all these awesome people of faith. Uh, people like Moses' parents and people from the book of Judges, people from other parts. It's basically... Uh, your spark notes of the Old Testament. It's getting us ready to, to see the history of people who had faith, who went forward, who did awesome things. And some people that, you know, made a lot of mistakes, but still followed God, even in the midst of difficultness. And so what it's telling us is run that race because we have this great cloud of witnesses. And so back to the runners. In my head, I picture there's one person going down a lane, but this person has been impacted by so many other people. There are coaches and family. Uh, usually you'd have this big crowd of people cheering for you from your country. And there's the history. There's the history of all these people that came before you, who ran, who inspired you, who taught you. And so even though the medal that's being worn around the neck of the Olympian might on paper seem like it belongs to the one person, 
there's this great cloud of witnesses surrounding them from their race. And that's the same in our lives. God calls us to run the race, to move forward, to meet the goal, even when there's persecution, even when there's difficulty, to keep living the life that he has called you to, to keep fighting the good fight. And sometimes stuff like that can feel like it's all on you. It's my life. The things I do are what impact my life, not other people. But that's not really true because when I'm running my race, I have this great cloud of witnesses. I have all the people that the book of Hebrews talks about. I have everyone that is in this book throughout the whole Bible as my cloud of witnesses. I have my family before me. I have my like my grandmother who passed away and other people who were people of faith who talked about faith. I have my old Sunday school teachers and pastors and Bible college professors and friends and you kids who helped me grow and learn. And I have this great cloud of witnesses around me too. There are people God has used to teach us, to help us grow, to run this race. And most importantly of all, our passage talks about Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one that has set everything up for us. And so at the end of the day, it's about Jesus. And we have Jesus by our side. And that is an amazing, beautiful gift. by my side, yeah, when I'm feeling lonely, and I start to worry, I know God you're near me, and you're always by my side, yeah, and I can lift my hands up to you, I can raise my voice and sing, are who I put all hope in I will trust you in
So thank you so much for coming today, my friends, and watching this video. As the weeks are coming forward, uh, we're getting really close to opening up kid ministry as long as everything gets worked out. So I'm excited to do that in person. Uh, those of you in the Montebello area, we'd love to have you join us when that comes up. I'll give you more information as we go along. But first, um, before we go, I'd like to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the people that surround us, the people who teach us, the people who came before us, the community you put with us. And most importantly, we thank you for, for Jesus, your son, who showed us how to live a perfect life in this world and lived in love and continues to live with us in our heart if we accept him. I pray this all in his name. Amen. All right, guys. See you next time. Bye. Small, but my God is big. I might be small, but my God is big.